All right, so I got my nine inch rear end from Quick Performance. This is the carrier, or not the carrier, uh, the housing. There's the carrier down here. You can see it's all been dialed in by Quick Performance. Axles over here. And up here I got some 11 inch disc brakes. There's the booters and calipers. Got the pads already installed, so that should be pretty quick to throw those on. Gave me some different studs here. Uh, they give me these little T-bolts. Um, and these, these guys here, um, I went with these uh, for the um, actual housing. Um, and what I'm doing, you can see I got three of them in there. These are a pretty tight fit. So what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, some washers. I got this off another guy on YouTube that put these in a Camaro, uh, nine inch in a Camaro that he has. Um, pop that on there and put those on there. And then from the T-bolts, um, have these uh, nuts here. And I didn't use these because they have the um, the locker thread or you know, the locker on there. So I don't wanna um, put that on there and then back it out. This is just a standard nut. So um, I'm gonna pop that on there and then tighten it until that's tight. And then I'll use a wrench over here. Sorry, I'm trying not to make you dizzy here. <laughs> and tighten that down until that head pulls in all the way into the hole there. Pull in, and just take your time, pulls right in. Okay, that's about as tight as I can get it. You can see it's pretty flush right over here, which means that this uh, area right here, you can see is uh, gonna keep that from spinning in the hole. Okay, so I got all the studs in there. Now, I got the gasket here, some RTV. I'm gonna throw some RTV on it and put it on. I think before I put the uh, pumpkin in, I'm gonna go ahead and take this down off of these. I mean, this was just temporary while I put those studs in and put it on the floor that way, um, cause that's gonna be front heavy when I put that in. And uh, yeah, go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna beat a RTV all around the inside of this. And I'm gonna carefully pick it up. And place it on there. Try not to get too much on the bolts if I can help it, or on me. I'm putting a pretty thin bead, it's just really to fill in any imperfections on the housing. And then now with this in place, I'm gonna kind of press it all in place. I'm gonna put RTV on the outside here before I put the pumpkin on. And I'm not gonna video that because I need two hands. So now I got RTV on the outside. And you can see I like to go around both sides of the bolt. I did that on the other side as well. I don't know if it's necessary, but that's what I do. Okay, you got the pumpkin in there. Tighten down the nuts. Those are about 35 um, foot pounds. So I tightened those down and um, ran the torque wrench on them. Um, except for, let's get a look at those, those two at the bottom here, uh, that one and that one I really couldn't get to with the torque wrench. Um, had to get a box in wrench and just get it as tight as I could. But um, 
you know, I, I feel like they're um, definitely within spec, um, so it should be fine. So everything's good. I kind of set up a little makeshift um, stand for this to hold it in place while I finish up putting the axles in and stuff, and then um, we'll move it into the car. So I didn't get this part on here, but I just installed the axle seals here. Um, so you have to drive those back, and then there's a uh, little section back here, like a, a stop, essentially, that you drive them back into. So um, you get a you can get an axle seal installation tool, and that goes over the top of it, and you kind of hammer it in um, to put that in. Uh, or if you're cheap like me, you get a big ass socket. Put that on there and hammer it with that. You just gotta be really careful to drive it in straight. Um, otherwise you'll end up bending it. All right, now I've got the axles in there. I went ahead and just, um, this is a sealed bearing, so we just slide the axles in uh, into the um, center section there and then drive them in with a mallet. There's um, uh, bearings stick out about an eighth of an inch. Um, but uh, that's seated and we're good to go. Now I'm gonna, put this in the car and should be ready to go. All right, so I got the rear end just set in there. Um, we brought it in and uh, jacked it up, put the leafs back on. Um, the issue that I ran into was, well, I had an eight inch rear end and guess what? The axle tube is bigger on the um, nine inch. So my U-bolts didn't fit. So I got a couple or four U-bolts on order those should be here next few days so right now I got it all set in I'm just gonna um, do the brakes on here um, I already did the other side I'll show you it was kind of dark over there so I didn't want to didn't want to video I'm trying in this tight squeeze over here because I'm next to the wall but you can see that's how they look once they're on there let's go ahead and put it on on this side All right, so first step, so we got these little T-bolts. I think those are going to go in um, right there in those four holes. I don't know. I couldn't find a good mount point, but pretty basic. You just slide those um, four T-bolts into those four holes on the axle. And then um, this is your retainer um, for the bearing. So you can see that kind of um, is... Uh, I don't know, I guess like mitered out or routed out there so that um, it um, goes right over the bearing and um, holds that in. And you want to, this bracket, um, you want to place it so that the four bolts, the four bolts um, holes on here are facing towards the back of the car. Um, and that's what the... Uh, that's what that guy's going to mount to. Uh, but let's see here. Let's see if I can get it on here with one hand. Uh, I'm pushing my T bolt out. Nope, wrong ones. So I noticed it goes in these smaller holes. So it has the larger drill holes. Um, right here and right there, but these T-bolts seem to line up better with the smaller drilled holes. So, um, at least that's what I noticed on the other side and just now on this one, uh, if I can get it. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> so that was a really lousy way of putting it on there, but do it one-handed but uh <laughs> um basically you can see it just mounts like that and then we have these four spacer bolts bolts and spacers i should say and those are going to go in those four holes to the back of that bracket let's see if i can get one on here just to kind of show you 
bring it. All right, so it's gonna go in these four holes here, there, and there. Um, but before we get to that, we gotta put our nuts on the T-bolts. So these have lock washers. Put those on. So I'll put all those on real quick and be back. All right, I'm gonna try and get this um, real quick. So I have the four bolts in to those T-bolts that were mounted from behind, or the four nuts on there um, with the lock washers. And there's this larger hole on the um, hub here that um, you gotta get lined up with each of these bolts to tighten them down. So um, you can see it's not super easy to turn this way. So what I do is I just kind of reach in here and you know, stick my finger in so I can see if I'm lined up. There we go. So that's on the first one there. You can see it lines up straight with the first one. And then oh, here's my extension on my um, torque wrench, right side um, socket, and then I tighten that up, and it's a 30 foot pounds of torque. And since I'm just setting on here, I have to hold this <laughs> and make sure I don't twist it, because it'll right off of there if I'm not careful. So now I'm going to move this to the next one. Okay. And so on. And we do all four like that. And I'll tighten down. this next step I didn't finish it here yet but um, you can see those four bolts like I told you before go in those four holes that were facing the back um, of the car and that puts this bracket on I haven't tightened the nuts down essentially um, put those nuts on there and tighten them down to 20 foot-pounds um, and then the caliper is gonna go on here all right and then what does it look like all fully mounted so there's the four bolts and again, those are tightened down um, with these nuts in the back. They're uh, locking nuts, so they're only tightened down to 20 foot-pounds. And you can see you have the bolt goes in from the outside of the um, car towards the inside. You have the spacer in between, then the bracket, then the nut. And then, um, next part's gonna be putting our rotor on and then the caliper. Okay. So I put the rotor on and uh, put a couple of um, uh, lugs on there to hold it flat against the, um, the uh, hub. <laughs> so um, got that on there and then went ahead and mounted this. Um, so there's a few notes on this. Um, the, uh, there's two bolts that go through. Um, they come in from the back side when you put them in, one on the top, one on the bottom. This back um, pad wants to fall out. Um, you kind of got to get it. You can see where it's um, in between here and it's the same on the bottom um, so that you have it kind of in between there that holds it in. Um, and then these tighten to 20 foot pounds or thir 30 foot pounds of torque. Um, and let's see what else. Oh. Uh, the bleeder screw, which I couldn't see in the video here, but uh, the bleeder screw should be towards the top of the caliper. Um, otherwise, we're all set here. Um, just need to run my brake lines. Need to get my U bolts and put that in. Um, reattach the shocks. 
and then figure out the parking brake, but that'll be last. Um, my main thing I want to get is the brakes, brake lines run, get the fluid in there, get everything bled, um, and obviously get this mounted back on, uh, the rear end mounted back on. All right, so I got some more parts. Um, essentially, I got these um, braided steel brake lines. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna run across the length of each side of the axle. And then there's a third shorter line here um, that's gonna go hook up to, the, to a T um, that's gonna be on the on hard line. Um, I, I went this direction because this was actually sold by Quick Performance who, you know, um, I bought the rear end through. And um, I also got these guys. Uh, these are going to wrap around the axle. And then you can see when they're closed, hold on. When they're closed, you kind of run your line through there and then it wraps around the axle and it'll hold that in place. Um, I got a couple of those. I might need to get more, but I just bought two to start with. Um, the reason I went with these uh, braided steel lines was because I had the hard lines. And these are the uh, pre-shaped um, stainless steel lines from stainless steel, um, or classic tube, sorry. You can see that's classic tube there. Um, and it's probably perfect for, you know, if you have stock brakes or whatever. Um, you can see it fits right on there, looks good. However, when you go back here to where the uh, connection is, um, sorry, it's hard to see, but the connection is up underneath the caliper there, um, somewhere in here. Um, and obviously getting a stainless steel brake line to extend to where it needs to down here doesn't really work. So um, I'm gonna, you know, the, I bought this as a kit, so I don't think it was a waste of money because I'm still using the hard line from the back all the way to the front. I'm still using the front brake lines. I'm using some of the um, lines for um, the, the um, distribution block and things like that. So, I mean, I'm just not using the two that go on the axle, um, which isn't a big deal. Um, I'm going to use these guys, and then, like I said, I'll get this T on there split them so one goes to one side one goes to the other and um and hook them on with those clamps and see if everything works um but before i do any of that i'm gonna actually get up under the car and um, secure this brake line let's see if i can get under here and see what it looks like with the camera i've already looked at it a couple times myself so you can see, here's the brake line running to the front, running into the um, the uh, tunnel here, and there's these pre-drilled holes that I could use um, for the, the clamps, but I'm probably going to use the one like the generic ones that you get from like AutoZone or. Um, Something like that. Uh, so essentially, I'm just going to drill into the side here with short screws and uh, short metal screws and then, you know, hook this up where I want it. And that way I can run the fuel lines separately. So I may end up having to run two fuel lines depending on how I do the fuel injection. Um, so it'll be different than the clamps that typically go in there. And it looks like I just received my e bolts. Cool. Oh, they're taped in there good, it looks like. I'll probably need two hands to do this. So I'll pull these out of here and then um, we'll get them mounted onto the car and then the axle will actually be in. So here's the U-bolts. Um, these already, I can tell, are not only wider than the U-bolts, the stock U-bolts that we had in here, but they're just beefier. So there's one of the, you can see the difference there. I mean, this is a lot thicker metal, 
a lot longer, which will allow us to put in some lower end blocks. That'll be nice, um, which I'm planning on doing to lower the rear end. And obviously I want to drop the whole car and get a good stance on it. Um, so we're going to pop those onto the axles and then um, should be all mounted up and then we're just going to go back to the brakes. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'll show you why here. So I went to go put those U-bolts on and I got a wider U-bolt, but the plate was the same size. So there you go. And you're not going to fit a wider U-bolt to the same plate. Uh, so I should have ordered the replacement plates. I looked at, um, you know, making these poles wider to um, see if we can do that. But I'm looking at there would just not be much material right here and right here, right there. If I widen these holes out, um, probably be all right right here. But um, yeah, it just wouldn't be enough material and I wouldn't feel safe with it. So um, Quick Performance has a set of plates. Um, that I'm gonna grab and um, looks like we'll be a couple more days before uh, get these mounted but I'll work on the brakes in the meantime okay so this is what I got in the back here where that um, brake line is you can see it comes around from where we mounted it up in the tunnel there and then uh, rides along here and then there's this actual mount here and I had to go get these clips from um, I think I got it from O'Reilly's or whatever um, and then I mounted this um, braided steel line, which is this, um, has the T on it. And I haven't figured out what I'm doing on that side. I want to mount it there somewhere, obviously, so it doesn't flop around. Um, so I want to mount it up here somewhere, and then um, we'll tee off to those other two that come to the come down the axles and then to the calipers. All right, I didn't realize I didn't shoot this, so. Um, I bought these little hangers from Ace Hardware and essentially is just a little sheet metal screw, self-tapping sheet metal screw, real short. Um, I'll show you a copy, or I have a couple extras, so I'll show you one of those. Um, and then the little loop there, I put one kind of in the middle. And what I did is I looked for where these holes are, where the seat is, so you can see this metal screw would actually go in about the back of the um front seat so i don't know obviously if it protruded a little bit i wouldn't want somebody poking their foot on it or something um, and then the same thing this one that i put in right here is um where the back seat would be up you know it'd be under the back seat not on the floorboard and then that goes back to that clip that i showed a minute ago and See, I got another one, I think, out in front of the transmission up there, and then it goes up into the engine bay from there. Um, so it should be solid. I mean, it's not it's not going to go anywhere. And just a quick look at those things that I bought locally. See, these are the clips that I got from Ace, and those are the sheet metal screws. You can see they're pretty little, but enough to get the couple threads in there, and should be good. And then these are the clips that I got from O'Reilly's, and they just... Uh, they call them um, brake best brake components and it's I just asked for the clips um, brake clips is what I did um, so just some things you got to pick up as you go through these kind of projects so I got these replacement plates from quick performance um, they're about a hundred bucks so now you can see our U bolts gonna fit in there so now we got them out them okay I got the um, U bolts on there that new plate, um, see I already attached the um, shock as well uh, to that one eye hole on the other side. And then the only other thing I'd say about these is that um, those are pretty standard uh, nuts on there. So I ended up um, putting a little thread locker on them um, and then tightening them down. <coughs> the other thing that I did here is I made this bracket over here and that's the brake hose that came from the hard line and then there's the flexible line that goes over to here and then I just made a I got an L-shaped bracket from um, Ace Hardware and drilled the right size holes in it um, and then I got a grommet to put that put through there so that this doesn't rub you know as it's sitting in there 
um, but it should sit pretty still once I have that set up in there and then the other two lines um, running across the axles and, and cinch down with those clamps.